clustering is an algorithm that is very versatile and importantly it has a wide range of applications across many different fields. We are going to discuss some of them in this video. And I would like to start by talking about perhaps the first and the most cited application in computer science textbooks at least, that is market segmentation. In market segmentation we group the, the same characteristics, the features, or as we also call it, the dimensions, into a special kind of clusters that we designate as segments. And segments split the population, the consumer population, into several groups that possess the same features that share a group of properties so that they can be handled in the same way. Market segmentation is used by many companies to partition to segment their customers into groups that have similar characteristics, such as, for instance, the purchase habits, the demographics, where they come from, and the psychographics. After analyzing the different segments and how they are characterized, the companies can better develop their marketing strategies, personalize their promotions, and their loyalty programs, and to have a better overall understanding of the market. Imagine the following example. You have a cafe and you decide to apply a clustering algorithm such as k-means to segment your customers according to two characteristics. You are interested in the characteristics of the age of the clients and their income and you just run a survey and obtain information about their age and their income. And then you run the k-means clustering to categorize the clients according to these two characteristics in simultaneous. You knew upfront that there would be four groups of interest, so you ask k-means to find four groups in the two-dimensional data. Because k-means uh, knows that he needs to find four groups. He classifies four groups into uh, the groups of students, soccer moms, retired, and others. By doing this, by segmenting your customers, uh, you as the cafe can better address and target their customers in a customized way. You can decide on how to design a new menu, a new product, and you can also think about new promotions. Markets can be segmented in very different ways, including demographics, geographics, psychographics, and behaviors. Marketing demographics is typically limited to characteristics such as age, gender, family size, occupation, religion, nationality, among others. One or more of these features can be used to create groups and to segment the market. Typically, this information is information that's easily accessible. It's easier to obtain this data than psychographic or behavioral data, and it's typically more descriptive than geographic segmentation. Let me give you an example of uh, marketing demographics. You have a company named Saga Holidays, it's a real company, and it sells travel packages exclusively to those over 50. And their marketing reflects this. For example, the images they use on their website to show their holiday packages are serene and peaceful. The people in their promotional video are in the target audience's age range. And the company does not forget to highlight the advantages to their age segment. Maybe these characteristics won't appeal to all 50 year old souls, but those who are looking for more busy, more stimulating adventures are not Saga's target market, for sure. So using demographic segmentation in marketing this way makes a lot of sense. Psychographics, in turn, is the qualitative methodology of studying consumers based on their psychological characteristics and traits, such as their values, their desires, goals, interests, and even lifestyle choices. In a few words, 
It is to classify the customers in a way that we grasp how they think. Maybe we can think of demographics as a black and white outline in a painting and psychographics as a color. You can see the image just fine with only the outlines in place, but to truly understand the narrative of the painting, you need full Technicolor. Let me give you another example of a company that does psychographics marketing. The fitness brand, The Well, it segments its marketing according to psychographic factors. Individuals who believe in ancient healing and that search for holistic treatments are targeted by this company. The segmentation allows the brand to develop marketing campaigns that target the audience psychological traits. And we have another two dimensions, the geographical dimension and the behavioral dimension. The geographic dimension has to do with segmenting the market according to the geographical location, the population density, or even the weather. In turn, the behavioral dimension has to do with the customer's behaviors. What are the needs and their purchase levels? Traditional market segmentation techniques are widely used, but they have their limitations. A common pitfall is oversimplification. In oversimplification, what happens is that consumers are grouped into broad categories, and these categories fail to capture the specific behaviors and intentions of some customers. This can lead, this can result in a one-size-fits-all marketing strategy that fails to resonate with specific consumer segments. Typically, in market segmentation, uh, also companies do not rely on a high number of features and they do not mix features of different groups. It is very rare to see a segmentation according to psychographics, demographics and behaviors at the same time. However, uh, with the increased knowledge and the evolution of artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, clustering algorithms are becoming a common feature in cutting-edge marketing teams. And this has led to more complex segmentation schemes. Now that we have talked about marketing segmentation, let us jump to another application of clustering that is document clustering from the text mining field. In text mining, k-means can be used to group similar documents, similar PDFs, for example, which helps to organize large volumes of text data. This grouping can help improve many applications, such, for example, when you have an information retrieval system, such as Google or Beidou. Moreover, it helps in the identification of thematic patterns across documents. As an example, we have data from thousands of documents, around 3,400 documents, and we know in advance that they are grouped into four topics, atheism, religion, computer graphics, and aerospace. Then we run our clustering algorithm based on the k-means, and we obtain for each category the number of elements assigned to it. For atheism, we have 800 documents, religion 972, and so on. After we define the clusters, we can identify the cluster centers, which provide an intuition for the most influential words for each cluster. So we know that in cluster one, the atheism, we have words such as just, think, uh, time, good. Uh, in the cluster two for religion, we have God, people, Jesus, Bible, Christian, think, religion. In cluster three, we have uh, the topic of computer graphics. So we have graphics, image, program, files, help, looking, does. And in cluster four, we have the aerospace cluster, and we have words that describe the documents such as space, launch, orbit, shuttle, NASA, Earth, moon, mission, 
among others. Clustering does not serve just to classify uh, a document according to the most used words. It can also be used to grow, group text documents expressing similar opinions or sentiments feelings. It can help you understand customer feedback, social media posts, product reviews and more. But how can you group similar texts based on their sentiment? Imagine that we want to analyze how restaurants are evaluated by customers on TripAdvisor. You collect all the reviews for each restaurant. For each review, you run a classification algorithm to detect sentiment towards the restaurant, positive or negative. Then you classify each restaurant according to review sentiments and mean star classification. Most likely, you will find two clusters, the restaurants with more stars and more positive emotion, and the restaurants with less stars and more negative emotion. K-means is also used in computer vision to segment digital photographs or images into distinct regions. In computer vision, image segmentation is a process formally of partitioning an image into multiple segments, multiple parts. The goal of segmenting an image is to change the representation of an image into something that is still meaningful, but it's easier to compute or to analyze. Often, it is not a great idea to process an entire image at once, given the high computational effort. Therefore, by segmenting the image, we can make use of only the most important segments for processing. We can segment an image in different ways. Typically, we segment an image to locate objects, animals or people. We can also segment an image to locate boundaries in the image, such as lines or curves. Both approaches are image segmentation. An image is typically a set of a given pixel, so it's a collection of pixels. In image segmentation, pixels which have similar attributes are grouped together. In very formal terms, image segmentation is the process of partitioning an image into several mutually exclusive regions, containing a set of pixels, the superpixels, that possess similar attributes. But perhaps the most important question is, why do we need image segmentation in the first place? Why is it so important? And if I say a word, it becomes clear. If I say autonomous vehicles, it becomes clear that we need image segmentation, right? Because autonomous vehicles need sensory devices like cameras, radar and lasers to allow the car to perceive the world around it to create a digital map of its surroundings. And autonomous driving is not even possible without object detection, which itself involves image classification and segmentation. We are now going to segment the image of a beach. We have in this picture a somewhat complex scenario and we are going to segment it with k-means into three clusters. After segmenting the image, and as you can see, the three clusters are somewhat imprecise, but they show clearly the island, the bluish sea, and the other part of the sea. And this is overall a good clustering result. Clustering can also be used in the healthcare industry, for example, to help in segmenting cancer cells and tumors to classify their severity. In healthcare, patient data such as medical records, diagnostic tests, genetic information and demographic characteristics are often collected and stored in electronic health records. K-means clustering can be applied to analyze this data and to segment patients into distinct groups based on their health profiles 
and also on their needs. In astronomy, k-means helps in clustering and classifying galaxies based on their shapes and other properties, aiding in the study of cosmic evolution and the universe structure. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Uh, for the next video, we will talk about how to use k-means for categorical data, uh, a very common question uh, related to the k-means. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next video.